the second row. The gentleman with a, but before you, there's a lady, then the gentleman with a red, uh, red coat. Okay, good afternoon everybody. My name is Caroline. And my question really is, uh, you know, um, uh, Mark has given us a lot of uh, good reasons why we should embrace GMOs. But why is this being battled um, by millions of uh, US citizens who are insisting on a ban and also insisting on the labeling, you know? And also, I mean, how sure can we be that we'll be able to import um, our produce if it's GMO? Yeah? Oh, sorry, export, sorry. <laughs> Um, um, and I'm also wondering, you know, during Obama's visit, he, he seemed to be um, twisting Africans into accepting the GMOs by pegging it to the aid package. You know, could you kindly um, react to that? Thank you. Right, next. Uh, my question is directed to Mark. Uh, my name is Jonathan. Uh, can From you where? Me? From where? I'm a man of the street. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, uh, Mark, your qualification, is it, uh, are you, uh, do you have a medical qualification or do you have a scientific, your, your background, is it in medical science or in biotechnology, is it, um, because uh, I would like a little bit more elaboration pertaining to um, what your understanding is of uh, modification, because I do agree that there's two different elements to, to biotechnology. There's the scientific element where there's the hardcore science, um, but there's also uh, a, a perversion of that that occurs uh, when when you consider biotechnology in its uh, in its in its application. Um, so biotechnology in its essence and biotechnology in its application. But my question to you directly: your point of understanding is it from a medical perspective, or is it just your interpretation of of literature that is out there? Thank you. I'll go to the gentleman that is facing me directly with a red, uh, blue, blue, blue coat. Thank you very much, uh, Mark. Mark, uh, I was one of those few Africans who are privileged to listen to your interview on BBC, and I raised up the issue in one of the scientific meetings. Now, Mark. Can you identify yourself, please? I am George Mungao Okonji from the civil society movement. Now, Mark, GME issue is still a controversial factor in Kenya. You have just told us that you apologized to the British farmers uh, you misled 15 years ago over the safety of GME foods. Now, is your visit to Kenya one of those visits you are going around apologizing to people who suffered under your 15 years uh, uh, negative impact on GMO foods. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I will ask Mark to respond to the issues that have been raised. Uh, Mark, you, you can respond from here. Well, <clears throat> maybe I'll go in reverse order. Um, so to George first. Uh, if you want me to apologize to people in Kenya, uh, I might do that, but I wasn't really the idea of, of what I was saying in the lecture. I think you can apologize too much in this life, and the point is you have to sometimes move on and look to the future and see how we can improve the situation uh, with regards to the uptake of this technology. Um, Jonathan, I think it was, about my qualifications. Uh, I think I explained this quite clearly. The whole point of this is that I'm not a molecular biologist, I'm not a biochemist, I don't have a professorial title, I'm not a doctor, um, and I'm not a fellow of the Royal Society or any other distinguished scientific cr criteria that you might care to mention. Um, nor am I a climatologist, a glaciologist, uh, a geophysicist, or anything else that I've written about. I'm a popular science communicator, and I write for the general public, and I try to communicate complex and difficult scientific messages which I get from the scientific community to the, to the general public. So for me, I'm no better than an informed layperson, which is why I didn't say that it's my reading of the literature which you should believe. What I said was, in the same way as happens with climate change, it's the consensus of the experts that we need to listen to, which is why I read to you the statement from the AAAS, and you could see equivalent statements from the American Medical Association, uh, from the National Academies of Sciences, and from the equivalent scientific institutions in every single country. Those are the people you should listen to, don't listen to me. By all means, I would agree with any kind of insinuation in that direction. Um, 
Caroline, I think it was about how GMOs are being battled by millions in the US. Well, this demand is not so much for ban, the demand is for labeling specifically. Um, labeling is already mandatory in the European Union. Um, I wouldn't personally oppose labeling, although I do have some concerns that it's based on a misconception that there's something which is in common with all GMO products. As I explained, it depends on the gene, it depends on the protein that the gene is expressing, it depends on the plant, it depends on a number of other factors. And there's no, I don't see any a priori reason why crops which have been developed through mutagenesis or through conventional breeding, which might themselves produce novel toxins, shouldn't also be labeled. And so I think the idea that there's something about GMOs which is very unique and specific and requires labeling is a misconception. But even so, if people want this information, if consumers want to know whether this food has been produced through gen genetic modification, I think they have a right to that information. So I would support, um, I would support labeling in that situation. Um, to, the, uh, to the gentleman over there who talked about Africa controlling the technology and the second colonization, I would ask you, do you use a cell phone? Do you use a computer? I mean, did you personally invent these, these technologies or did, were they manufactured by outside, by outside companies? No, you may, you may respond in a minute. This is not just a rhetorical point. Um, the issue is we are a global community and we share technologies globally. Technologies are just a way of doing things, a way of doing things better if possible. And all of us could share in these technologies and we can all enjoy the benefits that they bring about. You don't have to be nationalistic about this. You don't have to worry about colonialism. Um, I think um, Margaret mentioned this about the victim mentality. I'm English. I can't speak to this point. It's up to you how you want to conceive of these issues as a, as a Kenyan citizen. But I, 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 would, I would warn you not to be conspiratorial about this and to think that there's some wider political agenda which is controlling all of this kind of stuff. Um, even if you're against Monsanto, that doesn't mean to say you have to be against... Um, the, the virus-resistant cassava, you know, would you say that farmers in this country should be denied the right to even choose what crops they want to, they want to grow? So in no way am I saying everyone must grow GMOs and, and the whole world is going to collapse so you'll never feed themselves. You could do this without, but you could probably do it even better if you did have these things. Um, that's for farmers to decide. All I'm saying is that farmers should have the choice. At the moment with the bans and with the moratorium and with this misinformed um, opinions that so many people hold that this whole technology should be banned and strangled at birth, you're denying farmers the right to choose innovative new technologies, whether they come from abroad or whether they're de developed domestically. Okay. Um, my question. Can um, I know you still um, you have a. If um, now there are two ways of doing this. Um, we go back into the guise of ask the questions and we go around again in circles with you, or I give opportunity to others and then I can come back again to you. Because you know, you can see the crowd is many here and uh, we need to close this by four o'clock. But we also need to have some sort of understanding uh, in terms of what we want to achieve. Uh, am I correct? Yes, of course. Person? And yes. that's why so, I need so to So in terms of, of, of response, I, I would motivate that we be allowed to, to ask a question, uh, to, to respond to Mark's response. No, no, no. Support. If you start doing that, then it will be one to one. I think no, but Mark has made a presentation, you've asked the yes. question, he's responded. If you think that the justice has not been done on the question, yes, I, I then do. maybe you have an answer to the question. You can also put the answer on the table. Yes, I would like, I would like right. not necessarily put So it I'll give you that opportunity again, but I can see hands are up again. Okay. I will come to the ones who have uh, spoken first. Okay. Uh, okay? May I, may I, with your permission, go to the next round of Proceed. questions uh, of clarification? A lady with a yellow um, dress, sorry, I have to say that so that you don't confuse whether it's first, or maybe I could go first, second, third row. Third row, gentleman on the third row, um, then there's a lady here, I need to pick from different sides. Um, then there's a gentleman here. Let's start with those ones, and then I can come back again, All right? If you can be precise, brief, so that we give more people to ask the, the questions. Um, yes, my sister, you can fire. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Felicias. I'm from the University of Nairobi. I'm an economic student. My question to Mark is that you've told us a lot of things about the GMOs and biotechnology. I'd like to ask you if there are any coins about this? And if there are, please tell us about them so that if we, we, we decide to adopt if this... If there are any what? I didn't understand. Sorry. If, if there are what? If, if there are problems to adapting this 
GMOs and biotechnology thing. And uh, so that we can prepare us psychologically on how to deal with them when they come. Thank you. Thanks. My brother. Thank you very much. My name is Zachary Makanya. I work for Pelham Kenya. Pelham is an association of uh, NGOs who are working with small scale farmers. So when I talk about the farmers, I know what I'm talking about because we are working with them directly. The question I want to bring is about the coexistence. I think it has been proved that uh, GMOs cannot coexist with non-GMOs. There are farmers who may want to plant them or not want to plant. How do you protect the farmers who want to preserve the indigenous varieties which have, uh, which have passed the test of time? They have been using them over time. How do you protect them? The other, the other thing I wanted to get... No, let's, is, let's go slowly, my brother. Your question is how do you protect so that there is that issue of uh, co coexistence. Is that correct? Yes, I want to join something to that question. You saw the hand which are up. Uh, uh, can I, let's pause at that point. Give the mic to my sister who is next to you. Let's go one per person and then if time allows, they'll come back. Thank you. All right, thank you. My name is Wanjiro Kamau. I represent uh, Kenya, uh, Kenya Biodiversity Coalition, which is a coalition that creates awareness on uh, concerns around GM foods. Um, one, um, um, one of the challenges I find with Mark's uh, presentation, and thank you for, for coming to do it, um, is that um, you, you portray the, the fact, it appears that um, activists don't have um, substance or, or like facts to, to support our cases, which I would disagree with. But my question is this, the, the IAASTD report um, of 2008 actually said and it was made up of 400 scientists, CSOs, and, you know, a whole mix of people, that GMOs will not solve Africa's hunger or poverty problems. And if these people are a whole group of scientists plus other organizations, why then are we, should we move um, in the, the GMO way? If they've already had their recommendation and they're composed of scientists, why should we then move the GMO way rather than sustainable agriculture? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a gentleman here. Th thank you very much. Uh, mine is, uh, okay, first I'm um, Moses. Mine is a uh, general comment, and uh, I think the question we should be asking ourselves is that uh, at the end of the day, we need food on our table. Unless if we are, re we are going back to a situation where we are saying we are not going to give birth, because uh, the challenge is uh, improving the food security. So I want to maybe to make a comment that uh, in terms of we have the breeders in this country, maybe the policy makers should come out with a roadmap to ensure that uh, how, do you, how do you improve on what we have to incorporate with the new technology. Because all we are discussing, uh, to me, is just a misconception about the technology. As uh, Mark has said, uh, before we, well, we did What is your phone. comment or question? So, the general comment I'm making is that uh, maybe probably we can have the policy makers coming out clearly with the guideline or with their take on the biotechnology issues instead of having people making noises along, along the, the roads. Okay, thank you. thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lilian Kaivilu. I'm a development writer from the People newspaper. Uh, Mark, I would like to ask you what exactly, what exactly I'm here. I want to ask you what exactly convinced you to change your perception towards GM technology. And number two. No, no, just one, please. We've agreed, the fellow Kenyans, one per person. What has made you, Mark, change your, at, your, your position? Thank you very much. May I give it to Mark to respond to those ones? Then I go around again for another round of questions. Mark. Um, okay, to, to come to the what made me change your mind question, I did try to explain that a bit in the lecture. Um, it really was the process of becoming better informed scientifically about this uh, issue, and I'm not a biotechnology specialist, and I have never been. Um, I was a climate change specialist. I've been writing about that for 10 years, for 15 years. I was advisor to a head of state. I had to be scientifically literate, uh, better than that, actually scientifically informed with the latest expert opinion on the climate change issue um, if I was to do my job successfully. So that meant listening to the voices of the experts and to look at the consensus of scientists around the world about the reality of climate change. 
Um, when I saw and when it was pointed out to me that that consensus was equally as strong on the safety of GM foods, I could not in all conscience carry on promoting a version of events which disagreed with the, with the science on this issue. Um, you have to be consistent in this life. Um, you, you cannot pick and choose and say, I will agree with one group of experts on this area, but I will disagree with the other on the basis of what information. So it, was, it really was a process of better understanding the science and then gradually coming around to realizing that maybe I should um, speak about this publicly. I also wrote a book in 2011 called The God Species, um, which looked at the real ecological challenges which face the planet. Um, the top level ones for me were climate change and also biodiversity loss. Uh, we're losing um, wild species at an immense rate. We're, we're in the worst extinction crisis since the end of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Now, how do we try and tackle biodiversity loss? Well, we've got to deal with the pollution from, uh, from the overuse of, of fertilizers. We've got to deal with habitat loss and how much land is being cultivated. Uh, we've got to deal with the amount of water which is being abstracted from freshwater water ecosystems and all of these uh, very clear ecological challenges um, can to some extent be mitigated by better biology and the use of, uh, of crop production. So if you can increase the productivity per unit of land that you're using, then you can spare up more land for biodiversity. Uh, which brings me to the um, Kenya Biodiversity Coalition. I don't know why you have this name if you're concerned about GM crops. GM cro uh, the, cr the cultivate... The the biodiversity is, a, is an issue of wild species. It is not an issue of the diverse, genetic diversity of the crops that, or the seeds that farmers are using. Now, I agree that too should be, should be preserved, but these are two completely different things. Uh, and, and the issues of biodiversity concern me just as much as they concern you, but they are about wild species being lost. And to do that, you need to protect habitats, uh, and you need to protect habitats in the main by making sure that agriculture is efficient as it possibly can be in, in terms of its use of land. And you don't do that by only having the older varieties of crop which are much less efficient, which speaks to the point of the, um, the gentleman down there um, about um, using indi uh, indigenous varieties which are oh, over there, the, the indigenous varieties which have passed the test of time and so on. I mean, that's fine. I would never say to any farmer, I'm going to tell you what seed you have to plant. Um, I'm saying that you should have the choice about whether to grow new ones, old ones, recent ones, um, traditional ones, whatever. Um, but the fact remains that if you look at the key crops, um, the productivity which is achieved in Kenya and in sub-Saharan Africa generally is one-fifth of what's being achieved elsewhere in the world. So if you think you've got it right, I think you're making a big mistake. Oh, and coexistence as well. Um, coexistence is, a, uh, is, is, is considered a challenge uh, in, in only in certain crops which are wind-pollinated over very, long, very large distances. And only if you're keeping the seeds of the next generations of crops to grow and you want to have those without the trait which is uh, in the GMO crop. In the US, there are organic farms and farms right next door to each other which are growing GMO and growing organic without any problems whatsoever. Um, there are, there's large-scale commercialization of, of GMO soybean, maize, sugar beets, and many other crops in the US, all of which are grown in the same country. Um, and in some cases in relatively close proximity. So I think this is a false concern. I don't either think that there's a concern necessarily about exports. Um, okay, if, you, if you're talking about specific horticultural exports to Europe, I can go to my supermarket in England and I can buy um, uh, Kenyan green beans, which are often, oftentimes these can, be, these can be organic. But if somebody next door is growing uh, a GMO cassava, does that affect the green bean? I mean, it's a different plant. They're not gonna cross-pollinate. There's not gonna be any concerns. Um, and I think it's important to, to bear that in mind, particularly also given that Europe is already importing vast quantities of GMOs. So you, you shouldn't be locked out of any export markets simply because of this, this concern. Have I dealt with everything? Yep. Thank you. Okay, now don't ask questions. Do not ask questions. I'm giving you an opportunity to make a comment. Please make that comment in 30 seconds so that I can give more people. I'll pick five comments. I will stand, just in case there are hands this side, I can also see them, all right? Okay, just make your comment if you have not done a comment, please, or if you have not asked a question. There's a hand there, one. There's a lady, two. Gentleman, three. Up there, four, and I need a fifth one. Is there a hand down here? No. Right, okay. Comment. What are your comments so far, please? Just comment, don't ask a question. 30 seconds.
Yes, we can start from that angle. Yeah, my, my name is Justus Lavi, and I belong to Kenya's Small Scale Farmers Forum, forum a village-based small scale farmers network. My comments are on uh, the laws that are being used to introduce GMOs all over the world. First, in the USA, we have uh, Monsanto Protection Act. Uh, that has been um, um, introduced by Obama regime. Uh, in Kenya, we have some, something similar to that. And this has been uh, in the amendment, recent amend amendment in the last parliament, in the Seed and Plant Varieties Amendment Act of 20 2012. In this act, we have got some draconian uh, um, um, clause there, and it is seen that it is going to protect uh, um, um, GMOs particularly those ones that are from Monsanto. In Kenya recently we have gone to counties and in the, in the counties uh, there are supposed to be seed inspectors in this new amendment and the, the seed inspector is supposed to have powers to walk into any building, any compound, any time, and inspect seeds. Okay. Uh, please, I've not finished. 30 because, seconds. We yeah. agreed, my brother. I have to give other people. You'll not finish if I give you time forever. No, but I haven't, I haven't said what I wanted to say because that's it's, it's why I gave you 30 there. seconds. Can you please finalize? Finish, please. Finish. Yeah. I'll give you that to finish. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now, when you disturb, normally, normally GMO uh, scientists do that. They disturb us when we want to talk, but it's okay. We are used to it. I'm not a GMO. Uh, I'm, uh, for your information, I'm not a GMO scientist. I'm an advisor to the government and the chief executive of the National Commission for Science, Technology and Innovation and moderator of this event this afternoon. I'm not a GMO scientist. Okay. Now, what I was saying is that uh, that same leg legislation uh, authorizes the seed inspector to do what I have just said. Penalties are, if it's obstructed in Kenya, a fine of two million shillings or uh, imprisonment of three years. Now, the Monsanto Protection Act in the USA has got similar consequences. In Kenya, we are getting that. Uh, Thank you very much. Can you pass the mic to the next lady? Your comment, please. Let's keep to time, please. Switch off the mic, my brother. Thank you, lady. Continue. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, my name is Hildegard Wambali. I'm from uh, the National Environment Management Authority. Uh, my comment is just to thank the uh, speaker this afternoon uh, on enlightening us. Uh, we would also appreciate if you could uh, send this to the participants, the, 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 that is the speech that you have given. And um, one comment I wanted to make is that um, as NEMA, uh, we are charged with um, regulation of uh, environment, uh, and particularly for this forum, uh, the activities entailing uh, biosafety and GM in particular, if it will be, if any of the seed will be released, is in our docket. And uh, just to inform the public that um, we are working with the team, particularly the National Biosafety Authority on this, so that if there is any comment, complaint, questions, uh, you're welcome to inform NEMA so that we work on issues of biosafety together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there was a hand here. No, no, not you, my brother. There was a, I'll come back to you. There was a hand here. Yes, please proceed. And then there's a hand in the middle there. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you very much. My name is Kinyu Ambijiwe. I work for Syngenta, and I'm also a member of the Seed Trade Association of Kenya. Um, today we have about 103 seed companies in Kenya that give us the various tomatoes, carrots, corn, maize, sorry, 
and other vegetables that, uh, that we grow. I think that's great that farmers can go anywhere across the country and in the stockist shops buy varieties that suit them and suit the market for which they grow. I think this ability to choose is limited to non-GM crops and it would be great if farmers could also have enhanced seeds so that in crops like cotton, which the, our yields are extremely low at around 300 kilos uh, per hectare, whereas our contemporaries in West Africa are getting 1.5 tons per hectare, we could be able to uplift the cotton production in this country. Much the same with cassava, where we have diseases. Much the same with corn and with maize, where we have new diseases coming up. So let's not limit technology. Um, and that's my plea. I think the farmers have an ability to grow for the one million extra mouths that come every year, but we cannot help them do that if we tie their hands behind their back. Thank you very much. Yes, your comment. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Professor Michael Omunyin from University of Kabyanga, Dean School of Agriculture and Biotechnology. I just want to commend the speaker and all the members for the remarks. I would like to add that it's important we view this as an opportunity to be able to use both conventional technology as well as biotechnology to be able to put food on table for the majority of the Kenyans. The way to do that is, one, first of all, let us promote knowledge on conventional technology as well as biotechnology. Number two, let us use both technologies to develop the products. Number three, let us know the issues concerning biotechnology. Number four, let us be able to track these issues using the skills that need to be there through development of capacity. And I think in Africa, in Kenya, we need to develop the capacity and be able to use it and be able to safeguard the food that we create. Thank you. Uh, uh, Prof, thank you very much. Now, uh, I promise the ones who asked the questions, I can see you have a hand up, uh, 30 seconds. Then the gentleman with the red coat, 30 seconds. And my sister at the top there, 30 seconds. And then I will go to the next round of questions. Yes, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for giving me a chance again. Uh, for me, I would say, comparing food, food is life. Comparing food with the mobile phone that I have, which is made from China, that border on ignorance, because I don't eat this mobile phone. It does not go in my system. And comparing it with the food, that is border on ignorance, lack of engaging on intellectual debate. What I'm saying is this, and I quote Professor Wangari Madai in Af Challenge on Africa book that he wrote, the small-scale farming system spread widely across Africa are social and ecological asset. As food rebellion demonstrates planting indigenous trees and using traditional farming methods enhances environmental conservation and preserve local biodiversity. Let us be honest. <coughs> the GMO, as the man has said there, is a push from a national company to claim the Arab land in Africa to feed themselves. 1990, Mr. Okay, uh, I think you've made your point. Let me finish brother. this of 1990. 1990, there was a cartoon of nation where a chief was burning mutumba cloth and the children were sitting there without cloth. Then this was said, why do you burn this cloth? Give these children to wear. After 20 years, our industry of textile industry Everything, Kikomi, everything has collapsed. Thank you very because much. Of wrong advices that Thank you take. very much. I need to go. Thank, Thank you very much. I need to. Uh, I just want to remind you once again that we are not fighting here. I want you to use, you restrain yourself and have respect rather than calling professors useless in the university. That is unacceptable as the moderator and the chair of this session, I will not take that kindly. In fact, my brother, can you go to the mic and make an apology? I apologize, not all professors. Thank you, Thank you very much. I wish you could know me as your, as your fellow Kenyan, what I have gone through to become a professor. Sit there. Thank you very much, my brother. Uh, let, let's, let's be 
precise, let's be objective, let's be sober. And I promise you, as the chief executive of Nakosti, if you love this forum, Margaret, I will sponsor another one for Kenyans to come and debate here at my cost. Nakosti is going to fund that. I have resources. I have resources to do that, I can tell you. So let's, let's, be, let's take it sober. You know, we are dialoguing as Kenyans. We are looking for solution and how we can be able to move forward together. Yes, my brother. Thank you for that offer, and I think it's something that seriously needs to be considered, but also, in as much as there's a, uh, Mark is a, a pro-GMO uh, person, uh, an anti-GMO person should be also, uh, that is leading the field in the debate, should be brought to Kenya as well, uh, to be allowed to speak um, on behalf of the movement. Uh, it, it is a, it, it's not so much a movement, but on behalf of people that feel that, they're not being, uh, that they have no voice to speak. And the argument, uh, the, the reason for my initial question to Mark was, in terms of his qualification, uh, was, was a very serious argument because once you get to the, to the basics of understanding what biotechnology is, you'll understand that genetic modification is not simple. There's no guarantee that the modification will achieve what it says it will achieve. There's also no control over the variations of the different modification that will actually result. So you cannot control the extent of, of all modifications that are purported in any particular species. For example, corn. You're modifying corn by making it pest resistant. You're putting pesticide into corn, which then is ingested by our children. Yes, we want to all feed our children, which is important and which is part, uh, which is which is our duty to as 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 humanitarian and, and people of this world. But we cannot feed our children poison at the same time. Uh, you would not give pesticide to your child because if the bug eats the, if it's like spraying doom, everybody knows doom and target. You spray it on your piece of bread to keep the mouse away, the, the flies away, and then you eat the same bread. It, 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 has the same, it has the same impact. You must also understand that in terms of, uh, um, uh, specifically in terms of, of modification and the control of traits in, modifi in DNA modification, there is no absolute control on, those modi on, on the extent of the modification. And if you can't control the extent of the modification, you cannot control the quality of the food that you are put to producing at the end of the day. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, I don't want to go into qualifications of Mark again but I could compare you and Mark. Mark has said that he's been a journalist, an environmentalist, and uh, he has learned through a hard way, and he has understand. When I asked you to introduce yourself, you told me you are from the street, but I was so impressed with your biotechnology background. You I can see somebody from the street and is making a very good uh, comment as well. I so read that, a lot. Uh, that, that's okay. exactly what Mark has done yes. and he's been able to read and be able to come and dialogue with the scientists. Uh, that is well. why I'm proposing a, a person that is a pro uh, yeah. anti-GMO to come as well. Thank you. I, I fully that. agree. And, uh, and uh, uh, in, our closing, in our closing remarks, I think we're going to go into that. Yes. I also want to inform you there is a national biosafety conference that is coming up in uh, in, um, in um, August next month and uh, I will ask the chief executive to ensure that we have a side event of a debate for and against GM. All right? that's, that's my, my responsibility as the advisor of, of the government, um, I'm looking at all sides so that we can be able to make decisions from an informed position. My sister at the top, do you still have your comment briefly? Yes, I do. Thank yes, you please. for the opportunity. And I think that the previous speaker was excellent. Um, I, I didn't still feel my question on double ISTD report on agriculture was well properly answered. Maybe I would like some reaction to that. But my own comment that Kenya, we must also look at a, um, GMO foods in the context of what is happening in the rest of the world. Just this week we have information that the, the technical expert committee in India has actually called for an indefinite moratorium on field trials on genetically engineered crops in that country. This committee was formed uh, in last year as a result of the, the, uh, what was found out with BT Brinjal in India. And the reason they called for the moratorium was that the safety dossiers have ambiguous terms and the regulatory systems have major gaps. And the Indian, this committee also said there's no compelling reason why India should be the first country to consume BT food crops until there's more 
definitive information from a sufficient number of studies on the long-term safety. And these are the concerns that we have as Kenyans as well. Maybe okay. we need to learn from the Indian situation. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Um, maybe before I go to the next round of questions, I will ask Mark or anybody on this side if there's any uh, response you'd like to give uh, to, you know, to respond to the issues that have been put on the on, on the floor. Mark, you like to comment? Yes, please. And um, then, uh, Margaret, you'd like to comment as well. Okay. Yeah, the lady over there. I do apologise for forgetting to respond on the. IAASTD report issue. Um, this was a this this was a partly a scientific report, but it's not comparable, say, to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Uh, not least because several governments walked out of the process because they considered to have been overly captured by NGOs. Um, the private sector also left those negotiations. So I think the report that came out of it, um, which I'm not sure you represented accurately, it's a it's about a thousand pages long. There's very little mention in there of biotechnology. And it certainly does not say that biotechnology is inappropriate. So it's important to, to, to be straightforward about that. I think you also misunderstand about what BT is. BT has been consumed uh, by hundreds of millions of people through BT maize already in America and elsewhere in the world. So it's incorrect to say that it's not been applied to food crops before. Uh, with Brinjal, um, I think this is extremely unfortunate what's, that the tech in India has, has come out with. Um, again, this reflects how the process has been captured by very vocal NGOs who are themselves repeating misinformation. Um, Brinjal is being treated by immense amounts of insecticides. So my, my friend down there who said, would you want to eat poison? Well, you are eating poison. It's these, these, these insecticides, the children go around with buckets, they put the, the eggplant into the bucket, and, they, and this is then fed to consumers. So to have a crop which doesn't require insecticides should be an environmental and a human health improvement. And it's, uh, I think it's very unfortunate that people who call themselves environmental activists are opposing this. Uh, the, um, uh, the man from the street on, in red over there about... Um, uh, I, I, I understand the need for a debate and the need to, to have respect for both sides, and I hope I haven't been disrespectful to, to what you might call as the anti-side. Um, and I do understand both issues since I've, I've been involved in both sides of this debate myself. But when I, I read out to you the American Association for the Advancement of Sciences consensus position statement for a reason, um, they have produced the same consensus position on climate change. Would you disagree with that? Maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. If you, if you do, then you can take an opinion, I think, which differs from the experts on all of these issues. And there is a danger here of false balance. The BBC, when it covers climate change, it doesn't give a climate skeptic 50% of the time and a, and a climate scientist 50% of the time because that's false balance, that's not accurately representing the state of human knowledge. 99% of scientists agree that climate change is being caused by humans and only 1% disagree with that. You would have the same weight if you look at scientists, scientific evidence and scientific uh, information on biotechnology and I think that's what needs to be represented in this debate more accurately. Yeah. Um, there's, just, uh, uh, there's a reaction this side, uh, yes. I'll just give a quick comment on the reorganization of Africa. This is to let you know that the African scientists are doing, are doing the work in their African labs on the African crops. And uh, this technology, a number of these technologies are very free for use in the African continent. And are, at the moment, they are being used. And not Monsanto doing the work, but the African scientists themselves. Good afternoon. I would just like to make a comment. Um, I don't know if we all appreciate that um, Mark was anti-GMO, but what made him change is his study of climate change. He realized the problems of population increase, decreased uh, food production, and he was looking at how to tackle these issues is when he realized the pros of GMO. And the gentleman, the one from the street, it is good to be informed. Um, you talked about spraying bread. I'm sorry, you cannot compare that to the technology. It would be good to find out exactly how the BT technology works. Maybe I can comment on that uh, more specifically. Uh, say, uh, yeah, there's no, a difference no, no, between no, 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 no. on and in. Just, just put, it all, put it on hold, please. Um, there's order here. I need to get another round. If there's nobody with any question, then I will come back to you. Uh, I have about six minutes. I'm told I have to close it at uh, four o'clock. Um, so please, are there any other questions, people who have not asked a question? 
If you have, don't put up your hand, please. Kenyans, you know how we work here. Yeah? If you have, my brother, you already have. You have to wait a little bit. There's one hand up there. There's another one here. There's a lady there, three. Where's another lady? Four, another lady, and then a gentleman, Kihara, uh, five. All right? Let's take those ones, and, and then we see if there's time. Um, I wish I didn't have anything else. I would have stayed here until 8 o'clock, but I can't. And I'm told I have to close it. Right, okay, let's start. Um, yes, we can start from there. Thank you. My name is uh, Hilary. Brief. Trump. Let us be brief so that we give others opportunity as well. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. My name is Hilary Sang. I work with the National <laughs> Biosafety Authority. You talked about the conference that's coming in August, and somebody was uh, asking about the dates. The uh, conference will be held from 5th to 9th of August. And I would like to comment something that this is the National Biosafety Authority, is a government uh, agency that regulates genetically modified organisms in collaboration with NEMA, uh, CAPS. Uh, we have CAFIS, uh, PCPP, and many other agencies. So government has actually put in place uh, measures to ensure that GMOs are safe for the public. This is because National Biosafety Authority conducts risk assessment on all GMOs before they are released uh, to the public. And uh, somebody was comparing the GMOs with the uh, doom that is sprayed on the bread. It is not the same. This is because uh, you must have seen the journalist uh, putting a, a, a tomato and a, on a, a syringe. It's not, uh, that's not the way it is done. It goes through a very long process. PT Condor in Kenya has taken 10 years to do uh, uh, trials in Kenya. So 10 years is not uh, something that is just sprayed on a doom in a second. Thank you. All right. Next, uh, my name is Dan Okoto. I'm a journalist from the Standard Group. I, I'm a, I, I'm a bit, I have a bit of concerns when it comes to regulation of the sector, and I'm a happy uh, a representative from NEMA and NBA here. Uh, I think there are basically three organizations here which are working at cross purposes. That is NEMA, NBA, and uh, Kenya Bureau of Standards. For instance, when the government imposed the ban last December, it was the Kenya Bureau of Standards which, 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 which uh, took it upon itself to infer, to effect the ban, which I thought, uh, but, uh, but I thought that that was the mandate of the NBA. Uh, I, I don't know what, what they, are, they, are, they, are, they are doing to actually harmonize their activities so that the sector is properly regulated. Okay. May I ask others who are going to ask questions, uh, please refocus on the topic of the day. It's very good comments, but we want to refocus. Um, there's a lady here. My name is Rosalind and I come from Africa Harvest. My comment is just to Kenyans to be informed. Everyone is wearing a very nice cotton outfit. Either it came from Burkina Faso, from an African, and we are complaining about our cotton industries. We have to wake up. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Yes. Okay, my name is Julia. I was also wanting to, as we continue to debate about GMO, we should also think about the lost crops of Africa. There are free books on the internet, so many, and we can grow crops that have higher maybe vitamin C content or higher roughage content or things that are also, can also grow well in semi-arid areas. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yes, gentleman with a brown uh, coat. Kiara. Yeah, my, my own moment, Professor, I, I'm Kiara. Uh, I'm a GBD. Uh, I think as a project professor, you had said uh, you want to have, uh, uh, GBD wants to export. The only problem I have with these uh, GMOs is the fact that uh, they are not, we don't have red market. And also, uh, the second comment is that, uh, you know, it's a controversial subject. So I think what will be, you're not as far in the side, but I would suggest that uh, if it's a product, there was a, the issue of labeling. If uh, a product is GMO, let it be called GMO, let the public choose, I think. Just that, because it's controversial. 
Okay, uh, National Safety Authority is here. I'm sure they, they take note of that. There are issues that are related to uh, labeling um, for your information 2008. I am the one uh, that initiated the law that has seen the establishment of the National Bar Safety Authority being the advisor uh, of the government to regulate uh, this sector. But I think here yeah, that uh, point has been taken. Now it's past four o'clock. Um, I think I'll have to close this debate uh, unless, Margaret, you have another chair and Kenyans want to continue. Uh, I have another appointment, really my sincere apology. And I've been given a warning that I have to close it. Uh, the place was booked until four o'clock. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for the comments that you have uh, given. Um, as Kihara said, we might not have won today, but everybody is a winner. But I would like to take the comment that was given by a Kenyan here that we must all be informed, we must read. And I think when you hear of these opportunities again, please uh, come and listen. I gave an example of nuclear. Uh, when it happened in Fukushima, um, countries like Germany decided uh, by 2020 they're going to shut down uh, their nuclear uh, power stations, while countries like France, they, uh, they decided they're going to put more money in supporting nuclear, while Japan, with the disaster they had, they themselves say that we need to look for uh, ways and means of seeing how we can tackle the challenges of technologies. Uh, as time moves on, you're going to see more technologies coming to us. I think we need to look at the uh, position from an informed, I mean, uh, issues from an informed position. If there are any challenges of these technologies, we should be able to address them rather than brushing them aside. This is my advice, and, and I think by the end of the day, I leave it to you to decide uh, in, this, in this meeting. And as I've said, my promise still stands. We are going to organize a forum where we get four under anti-GM to come and really have that dialogue uh, so that Kenya could be able to, um, uh, you know, make a, a, a decision from an informed position. I also want to inform you there is a task force that has been set by the former minister of uh, of medical, um, former minister of uh, public health, now um, health, and I'm also one of the task force members to see whether. Uh, there are any negative uh, effect of GM and whether the ban need to be lifted or otherwise. There's a whole team that is being chaired. Uh, the team is being chaired by Professor uh, Thairu um, as well. Lastly, just to inform you that we have a legal framework. We have a biotechnology policy in this country. So there was a, a question about that and I thought I need to comment on that. Uh, Kenyan, uh, we know where we are and we know where we want to go as far as biotechnology is concerned. And lastly, NBA has got the mandate of uh, regulating all aspects of genetic modified organism in this country. Uh, I would like now to pass the mic to Margaret so that she can give us a word of thanks. My sincere apologies to my fellow Kenyans who still had burning issues but they are not given the opportunity to rise them because of time. You're going to get next time so that we can be able to have more time to dialogue on this very important subject. Margaret. I've decided to stand so that I can see everybody because when you are there, you are a bit constrained. You don't really see uh, the landscape. Uh, first, before I pass my vote of thanks, I would like to make just two quick comments uh, which the chair allowed me to do as I'm passing my vote of thanks. Uh, the question about uh, importation of seed and how we access seed, uh, I would like just to bring to our attention that um, Kenya is a member of COMESA, Egypt is a member of COMESA, and actually all the 18 COMESA member countries, minus Libya, I think it's coming up now, uh, have already signed a seed harmonization uh, treaty, and you can actually access your seed for any crop from any of the countries as long as the ecological systems allow. So, uh, and these are not GMO seeds, by the way. So let us uh, 
just bear in mind that that, is, that facility and uh, opportunity is available. And so if you need some seed from Zambia, there's no reason why we should not import because we already have a system in place. And mind you, if you go around our uh, 100 plus uh, seed merchants, you'll also find that they have seeds that have been grown from here and from outside. Really, the global space is open and we have that choice and nobody should stop the other from making a choice, just as we have made choices to come here today. Secondly, uh, there's the issue when we are discussing uh, about these debates of the emotions that uh, the technology raises. And one of the reasons why it does so, does so is because we tend to think that uh, once, I, I can use Wanjiro's uh, comment that we are going GMO way, there is no way we are going, there is no GMO way, because this is a technique, this is a tool that is available. It is already available to several millions of farmers around the world, and, so, and that has not prevented farmers from here, including uh, my good friends there, the small scale farmers, from doing their business of farming and saving their seeds. So this issue of going one way or the other should not arise when you are discussing uh, this technology because it is only an additional tool that becomes available in the global space and those who would like to use it should have it. Those who don't want to use it can still go on with their normal traditional practice. And this brings me to the last comment about coexistence. Many times when you think about coexistence, it's always uh, the, the, it's, it's a kind of uh, a tip of a balance that uh, pities those who want to grow traditional, uh, 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 traditional, use traditional seeds against those who want to use uh, GM seed. The, the issue here is it's a kind of a double-edged uh, argument because even those farmers who invest in getting the better or an advanced seed, so to say, let, let me not say better, maybe an advanced technology or the tool, also have a right to ensure that the purity of their crop, that it is not uh, cross-pollinating with the traditional variety. So as we do our arguments, let's, let us also feel for each other because we are talking about having the choices and the way we coexist is the same way we coexist as human beings today. Even the plants uh, do the same. So uh, once again, let me uh, stop there. I had a few others, but uh, because of time, I will not do that. Uh, but first and foremost, appreciate the offer that uh, the chair of uh, this session, uh, Professor Abdul Razak, has given about uh, a promise of uh, several other engagement sessions. And really, I think this is the way we want to go. We want to dialogue with each other. We don't want to keep debating because a debate, one side wins, one side loses. But we are saying here, there's really nothing much to debate about whether or not the technology is going to be used or not because it's already available. And the choices that we make will be based on the, info, the best information available. So the best we can do for ourselves is to try and research and get the evidence so that we can make decisions out of information and not out of emotions. I know also we have ideologies. And unfortunately, I've also seen a number of people circulating materials here, which I don't think is, is right. This forum was not meant for distributing materials, and so if you have been doing that, you have been going against the rules of this uh, forum, and I think in future, Chairman, uh, this should be controlled so that uh, we don't really, we are not coming here to win or lose. We are coming here to engage as Kenyans. In, in the end, we'll all be here together, and this is our Kenya, this is our world. So thank you very much, uh, Chairman, uh, for leading us through a hot session, I must say. It was a hot seat. You mentioned at the beginning that it's a hard talk. I think it has been a bit maybe on one side, and so we need to really get uh, our experts also coming up so that uh, we can really get to respond or get to work together on the concerns that are raised. So a very special thank you to you for managing the session so professionally. At some point, I was getting scared and feeling like <laughs> it's getting out of hand, but uh, I think we have managed to do that very well. And we have also been very civil in the way we have uh, reacted. So I also want to thank all of you, the participants. I think you are wonderful. You have been uh, you know, uh, very uh, 
participative, interactive, and uh, I think the issue of respect, respecting opinions, is also another civil thing that we have to learn. Even when you talk about coming from the civil society, I also come from the civil society, and being civil is getting to appreciate that every individual billion uh, citizen has an opinion and has an interpretation, and it is only fair that we learn to respect other people's positions, decisions, and there is nobody here who is going to force anybody to take what you don't wish to take. Uh, so again, now I come back to uh, our speaker uh, this evening, this afternoon, uh, Mark Linus. I must say that uh, you really have guts because many of us sometimes discover that we have made a mistake. And I'm sure even as we were making our contributions, there are times that we, we realize that we have actually erred or we have lied or we have done something that has affected so many people, but very few have the courage and the guts to make a confession. I remember I, came, I come from the Catholic uh, background and uh, whenever people would go for the confession, for those who know about the confession, you know, many times people will always shy away. You know, you'd reach somewhere near the window where the father is and you see many others uh, retracting. So I think let us also learn. One lesson I've learned from Mark is that uh, we can still make mistakes, but these mistakes after we get uh, the right information, we can still come back and really uh, get to start re-engaging. And he has made it clear that he is really not here to promote GMOs. He's just sharing an experience. He has had something from the heart that he has been very open that he feels he must share with us. And to that, I really want to thank you, uh, Mark, very much and to really appreciate uh, that courage. Uh, finally, I would like to uh, express our deep appreciation to all the other session facilitators. We have had uh, several events from yesterday, and uh, most of our people who have been facilitating the sessions are here. I would still want to encourage uh, you to participate even in the rest of the events that are remaining. We have a public lecture at the um, University of Nairobi tomorrow for the academia and the students. Please feel free to also come, and uh, let us continue engaging each other, and please, with a lot of respect and humility. Now I would like to call this meeting to a close and really ask you to join me in applauding everybody who has, because all of us have, who have made a contribution to the success of this meeting. So let's do it. So uh, 